And now, in addition to the rising costs and rising crime, Canada's reputation is broken. This is, by far, the biggest hit Canada's diplomatic reputation has ever taken in its history. And it happened under Justin Trudeau's watch. Conservative leader Pierre Polyev there slamming the government's recent record as the Liberals lost the House of Commons speaker this afternoon. It's the latest in a string of political problems for this government. Let's bring in the front bench to unpack the consequences of it all. Brian Gallant, Lisa Raitt, Tom Mulcair and Rob Benzi. Uh, Lisa, the government was in the past few weeks fighting back, it seemed, a lot harder on issues that we have been talking about for months as being top of mind for Canadians, namely cost of living, affordability, housing. They put new legislation in the window. Today they made another announcement um, about uh, making more money available for people who want to build rental buildings. Um, do you think, to what degree do you think this kind of knocked them back a couple feet? It certainly is a certainly is a, a step that they've missed, right? I mean, there's no question about it. You'd rather be talking about the good stuff. I watched the press conference on the on the housing announcement. All the questions that went to the deputy prime minister were about what happened, and it kind of sucked the oxygen out of the room about what is notably a pretty good announcement for the housing industry. Really, just didn't get the coverage. So you know, you're stepping on the message because this is still out there and it's going to be problematic. But if we blow it up to the bigger world, I mean, geopolitically, it's not a great time for the world right now. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a, almost like a Cold War happening out there where people are, are trying to figure out who are allies and who are not. And here we have Canada taking on India in a very public way, getting a lukewarm response, I would say, from their allies and then really putting their foot in it. And I guess, you know, allies can kind of go, oh, you're a bit of a mess right now, Canada. Um, we're just going to be pretty quiet at the moment. So I think it really is a big impact on our ability to function in the bigger fora of international relations right now. We have a long way to go in order to show we can we can be at the big table. Rob, the international headlines certainly as of late have not been the kindest, especially following all, all, all that ha has happened over the last little while. Uh, do, do you think this has done uh, damage on a wider scale? Well, I mean, I, I think this is a terrible gaffe. It's embarrassing and it's humiliating for Canada. I'm not sure that it's the greatest uh, diplomatic humiliation, uh, humiliation in the history of the country. Um, I, I, I think back to Canada turning back boats of Jewish refugees in 1939. That's a lot more troubling in the in the greater sweep of history than uh, you know the speaker of, from North Bay uh, recognizing his 98-year-old uh, Nazi uh, uh, former Nazi uh, constituent, which was stupid and idiotic and he deserved to, to, to lose his job and, and, and be embarrassed for sure. But the government, the, the, the bigger problem, Vashi, for this government right now is that it's, it, Lisa's right, they can't get their message out because everything, everything, every time they, every time they raise their, raise their gun or whatever, they shoot themselves in their foot, in the foot. Uh, the, the Rota thing was, is, is, is a small part of that, I suppose. But you, like the India, uh, uh, diplomatic relations, we still got the, the, the China meddling to talk about, uh, you know, and public inquiry coming uh, on that. So, uh, they they are just ha having trouble getting out of their own way now and if and if election were held now they would be in deep deep trouble but there isn't going to be an election right now it might not be one next year it might not be till 2025 so if if they can take a chill pill and get some stuff right for for a while uh, they might they might uh, live to fight another day I was kind of surprised Tom that they held that announcement today uh, just because as Lisa said they, you know, it, it probably will go over fairly well. It again shows that they're doing something uh, when the criticism for the last number of months is that they're not doing anything on that file specifically. They had to have known that it would be overshadowed on this day where we were, I mean, they, they held it uh, right as, like right before the, the speaker resigned while we were all waiting to see if, if that would be the case. You would think kind of in the back, back rooms they would have guessed that that could be the case and would have held that press conference on a different day so they could perhaps get a win out of it. I don't know. That was my reaction exactly when I heard this one today, saying what wasted ammunition that one is. And, you know, there's an old saw in political communications that a bigger piece of news can wash away just about anything else. So Trudeau heads back into the House last Monday, first day back, 
just drops this huge bombshell about possible Indian government involvement in the murdering of a Canadian on Canadian soil, sucks all the oxygen out of the room, takes everything away from the, the, uh, the, the opposition parties, and lo and behold, they're foisted by their own petard because their magnificent day with Zelensky in Parliament gets squashed by a bit of bad luck around Anthony Rota, what we just spoke about. So they haven't been able to get their message out. But since the meeting of their cabinet, this bloated, overblown cabinet that they've got, which was supposed to be all about refreshing and renewing, I, there's 80 percent of them have, you know, are absent without leave. We haven't seen any of them. So they finally got a decent announcement on a key topic and they roll it out today when nobody's going to talk about it. It's unbelievable. They used to be so good at communication. Look, I was an adversary of the Liberals, but I can tell you, their communications <laughs> ability was redoubtable. They were extraordinary. And they just, to use the expression that Lisa used, they've just been stepping all over their own messages. So they're going to have to really fix whatever that problem is. I don't know the internal workings enough to know who the individuals involved are, but boy, oh boy, they need a great big broom to come in and sweep clean in terms of their communications. And by the way, that is the number one complaint that I've been hearing from people in the Liberal caucus, which is, look, we can't get a message out and our comms are just awful. And there is still a lot of grumbling. So Mr. Trudeau's going to use what he can. He's got all the tools of incumbency of government. That's a really huge tool chest. But then he's going to have right. to find some proper people who know how to use those tools and produce a result. What's the best way for them? I mean, you heard, oh, you, I'm not sure if you listened, but, but Steve McKinnon at the top of the show was saying, you know, we got to move on, we got to address affordability, that's where, that's where our agenda is, that's where the Prime Minister's focus is. Is it easier for him to do that from a communications perspective and convince Canadians of it if he does say something about what's happened over the last number of days and then move on to try and sell the message that that's what they need to focus on other things? Well, let me start off by, by saying that I think the biggest threat, despite that loss is going on that I would see for the Liberals re-election effort is affordability, is cost of living. And, and I think the polling has showed that over the last few months. If you look at polling from different uh, organizations in 2023, the Liberals are always sort of behind. Maybe a few polls they were ahead, but not by a lot. And, and this is for months now that, that the, the Tories are certainly in, in a strong position. So affordability and cost of living, in my humble opinion, is what caused most of that or is at the heart of that polling for the last few months. The things that have happened put aside the, the, the substance of the problems with India, with what's happened with uh, former Speaker Rota or current Speaker Rota until tomorrow. Those are, uh, from a political point of view, a distraction for a government to be able to get on the message of affordability and cost of living. So they're trying to get off the mat. They've been trying to get off the mat when they did the cabinet shuffle, when they did the caucus retreat and they tried to come out with affordability and they're trying to get off the mat and they keep getting pushed. Um, in the case of India, in the case of Speaker Rota, I think the Liberals internally would feel or in the Prime Minister's office would feel these are we were given intel that this happened this isn't something that we we created right. sure the way we dealt with it can be kind of argued but but the speaker wrote it, we didn't do this this was him this was his office this was him so mm -hmm. so this is something that kind of landed in our lab we're trying to get off the mat and to your point probably shouldn't have made that announcement today hard to get through based on what's happening but they really want to get on the message of affordability, cost of living, and their efforts to address it. Okay, I have to leave the discussion there. Thank you very much to our front bench, Lisa Raitt, Tom Mulcair, Brian Gallant, and Rob Benzie. Today's takeaway is coming up next. Don't go anywhere.